how can we help our family members change how they eat, how they move, how they live so they can be healthier? Hey, Howie Jacobson here, co-author of You Can Change Other People. And today I want to talk about probably the hardest part of getting people to change, which is talking to family members. And especially if you are someone who eats well, you eat maybe a whole food plant based diet or close to it. You move around, you do stress management, you exercise, you do all the good things. And there's someone else in your life, maybe a spouse, maybe a parent, a sibling, a child who's not thriving, who's eating like crap, who's not moving and you can see them. Maybe they're already sick. Maybe they're on the verge and they're heading in that direction. Maybe you're worried that they're not going to live long enough and you're and you're scared and you could be angry and you could be frustrated and you really want to help them. So what do we do? So I got a really nice email from someone who is a strong advocate of whole food plant based living, who actually teaches classes. And this person said that there was a few lines in the book that really spoke to her. So let me just read them to you. People change when they choose to change. People don't resist change. They resist being changed. Shame is inhibitory. You have to drop any traces of superiority, knowing better or being more responsible. Simply acknowledge that you've been strident, probably annoying and that you're sorry. So let's go over each of those lines one by one to give you an idea of how to change your approach to be more effective in getting other people to change what they do. Because right, like if you've been trying for a long time and you've been getting into arguments and resistance and you're trying to get them to change how they eat and you're trying to do all this, then the minute you're not there, they're going to revert. Right. So people change when they choose to change. People don't resist change. They resist being changed. So if they feel like you are trying to change them in a particular way to get them to eat vegan or whole food plant based or to get them to wake up in the morning and go for a walk or go to the gym or to get them to meditate, they will resist. So instead of that, what we have to do is ignite their own ownership of the change. Instead of us telling them what to do, we have to ask questions and stoke their curiosity so that they themselves are in touch with why they want to change. Right. And let's face it, nobody is like, I really want to be sick. I hope that I develop type two diabetes and high blood pressure and have to be on all these meds and maybe get a foot amputated. Nobody is thinking that people aren't unmotivated to be well. They just don't know what to do. They may think that they can't do it. They may think that the costs of giving up their favorite foods is too great. And if you have been pushing them, they are going to resist just to maintain their autonomy. So we've got to shift from telling people what to do to becoming very curious about what they want. OK, shame is inhibitory. What does that mean? I mean, shame is one of these emotions that is hardwired into us and it has a purpose. All of our emotions have an evolutionary purpose, a survival purpose. And shame is that thing that when you feel you want to stop moving, you want to stop doing it inhibits action. It inhibits forward movement. If you feel shame, it's because you are worried about being ostracized from your community that they are looking down, they are disapproving of you. So you stop and then ideally you look around and you figure out what am I doing? What do I need to be doing differently? And it's the pause that gives you the perspective to change. So what does that have to do with helping our family members eat better? Well, suppose you try to shame them into eating better. And you want to shame that, you know, and, and we shame people in all sorts of ways. One way is obviously like shame on you, but we can also trigger people's shame simply by criticizing. Are you really going to eat that third donut? Oh, that triggers shame. Someone will then feel judged from the outside. And especially if they've been trying to not eat that third donut, they're going to be like, what's wrong with me? 
Another way to trigger shame is to offer advice, unsolicited advice. And this seems crazy to us when we're offering it, but think about when you have received unsolicited advice. What that communicates to you is the person giving you the advice knows better. They're smarter, they're more responsible, they're more in touch, and you are less than. They know you don't, and that can trigger shame. And again, shame is inhibitory. It will stop us from moving forward. When we trigger shame in other people, it will stop them from moving forward. And when we want people to change, we want them to move. We want them to do things differently, to take new actions. So anytime we're triggering shame, we are getting the opposite of what we want for, for them and from them. So you have to drop any traces of superiority knowing better or being more responsible. This is hard. This is hard for those of us who used to be unhealthy or overweight and we changed how we ate and we read Whole and the China study and we watched Forks Over Knives and What the Health and the Game Changers and we feel like we have an understanding now. We feel like we know better than we did and when we look around, we feel like we know better than the medical establishment, than the keto people, than the fitness people. We can really walk around with this feeling of I've got the secret. I know better than other people. And whether that's true or not, it's not that kind of energy is going to get in the way of helping other people make changes. Because again, if we are coming from a position of we know and they don't, we will trigger their shame. So we can't come at it in terms of I know what's right and you don't. We have to come at it from a position of curiosity. And when we do explain, eventually, when we get into the conversation about what to do, we have to do it from a place of humility. But that's far off because we, we're not even invited into the conversation if they feel like we are coming from a superior position. We know better than them what they should do. Simply acknowledge that you've been strident, probably annoying, and that you're sorry. So most of us come with baggage. We have tried for weeks or months or years or decades to get the other person to do things differently. And we've probably been strident and we've probably tried to convince them and we have probably tried to motivate them and we have probably tried to give them advice and we have probably criticized them and nagged them and given them looks and made noises. <sighs> Even if we're doing it very quietly and it still can be perceived as passive aggressive, we have to own that. And not only do we have to own that, it's actually our best move. So if you want to begin to engage with someone where you've hit a brick wall, where you are at loggerheads, where there's a dead end, and every time you want to talk about this, you're like, Oh, do I really want to go through this again? Do I really want to have this conversation? Are they just going to get angry at me? Are we still going to go through this futile dance? The way in is for you to express your own vulnerability, to do so by owning, hey, you know, I've been worried about you and I have come across in the past in ways that have not been helpful. And I've told you what to do and I've bothered you and I've tried I badgered you to read stuff and watch stuff and listen to stuff. And I'm sorry. That's not how I want to be around you. You know, I love you. You know, I care about you. And I'm really sorry for the ways in which I have been trying to be better than you and put my own opinions onto you and make you do what I think you should do. I'm sorry about that. That is an opening. If you come and at that from a sincere place and you're not doing it in a manipulative way, the other person can then say, oh, well, you know, I know you meant well. Or, yeah, that's been really annoying. And at that point, if they if they agree with you, yeah, you've been really annoying. Don't justify yourself. Don't don't immediately go. Yeah, but I did it for a good cause. You say, yeah, I'm sorry. I really want to do better. Get to the point where you are undefended, because when you become undefended, that's an invitation for the other person to drop their own defenses as well. That's when they might be able to say, 
you know, I do want to do better. I just haven't figured out how. And now that's an invitation for you. And you might take it up then and you might wait. It might be smart to wait a week. But at some point to say, hey, you know, you mentioned you were having trouble. I know I've been a pain about this in the past. I really want to change. If you ever want to talk about it with me and think it through, I would love to be helpful. And they may say no. And saying no is not a bad thing because that is now an expression of their autonomy. They if they say no, they are developing ownership so that when they then come back and say, yeah, you know what? Can we talk about this? Or maybe you could suggest a couple of meals for me. Or maybe we could talk about changing up one dinner a week when now they're beginning to be open because you went first. If you want to be a leader in your family, in your community, with your friends, lead with courage and courage means opening yourself up to vulnerability, opening yourself up to feeling. That you might have been wrong, that you might have done things in ways that were hurtful, being open to that, being willing to listen, being willing to hear and accept the feedback. Once you do that, you have stepped forward into a whole new relationship, one where the other person can now feel free and feel safe to express what they want. And once they're talking about what they want, it's a completely different conversation from what you want for them. So again, the book is called You Can Change Other People. Yeah, it's a business book, but it's really a human book, a human communications book, a life book. You can find it anywhere books are sold. I would love for you to get a copy. I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to see your Amazon reviews. And I'd love to hear the stories of how you use the four steps to actually improve the lives of the people you care about. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.